Welcome back, everybody, to the Filmmakers Roundtable, the podcast dedicated to films, filmmaking, and gaining insight from filmmakers working in the industry. I'm Thomas. I'm Dylan. And I'm Ryan. So, how are we all doing today? I'm um, uh, fine and dandy as as I can ever be, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a long week, but I'm yeah. glad to be here. Yeah, yeah I'm, um, I'm hanging in there. You know, I've kept myself busy. Definitely. So. Definitely. And um, so, uh, what uh, what are we working on? So... Um, currently right now I'm shifting my focus, uh, to the commentary we did over, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, filmmaker Cam Clark's movie, The Strike. Oh, yeah. That'll mm -hmm. hopefully be coming out soon. Yeah. I've just been, no, we... I've been focusing on a wedding video here recently and I got to get Same. that DVD burned. Same. All the, all the stuff I've been editing is wedding stuff the past three weeks. So, uh, both for my per stuff I've shot and stuff I got for, uh, I'm interning for. So, but, um, yeah. So, Ryan, what are you working on? Yeah. Um, recently, I've been doing a lot of graphic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, doing some online graphics for Discord and Facebook groups online. Um, and then I've also been prepping um, for my own personal stuff on my own channel um, with, regarding, like, movie reviews and things like that. But also um, thinking and planning out content that we'll discuss later in this episode mm -hmm. about what we were going to be adding to this channel. Um, so, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Stay tuned. More to come. And uh, I've been, uh, like I said, I've been working on the wedding stuff. That's really all been ninety percent of the editing I've been doing the past three weeks, because um, I take a while to do. But um, yeah, I've been doing that, and I've also um, been working on uh, some of the stuff Dylan and I have shot. Uh, um, some stuff will be uploading here. Some stuff will be uploading to my personal YouTube channel, which uh, all the links uh, for all the for all of our individual channels and our Twitters are in the description of the YouTube videos. And uh, hopefully, hey. and uh, we probably should put those on the SoundCloud. Oh, I'm I'm way ahead of you, man. I'm okay. already doing that. Okay, good. I don't know if they have a like a default upload default like YouTube does. Let me double check. It's been a while. Okay. Well, well, we'll worry about that later. Yeah. So, um. But yeah, that's yeah, you know, that's what I've been working on. Um, also working on getting awakened. So uh, biggest hurdle right now is finding another actor because uh, the actor we originally cast uh, has not gotten back with me. I gave him a like a two week um, ultimatum or mandate, you know, that if he doesn't respond, we're gonna move ahead without you. So no, no uh, hate or anything. Just you know, we're on a deadline. We've gotta, we've gotta get a move on. So. And that's so. something I've got to get better at doing mm -hmm. because I I was working on a dramatic reading uh, years ago, and I've told you about that, But um, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> yes, oh, that God. is. Uh, so, um, though I've got a very squeaky clean memory of high school because I didn't, I didn't see a lot of the stuff you saw until yeah. after I graduated. Yeah, <laughs> and... Uh, well, not to get too much into detail, but from what I've been told by some of our younger friends, things haven't really gotten better. But anyway, uh, let's move on to our next segment, uh, movies. Movies. <laughs> music, music. Uh, okay. Uh, so so uh, let's talk about... First, we're going to talk about some movie news. Yeah. What do we got on the agenda first, Ryan? Okay, so the first... Uh, thing on our movie news list for this week probably one of the biggest stories um, that has came out in the last week is that mark hamill and carrie fisher are both officially listed in the cast for star wars episode 9 mm -hmm. obviously i think a lot of people clearly saw uh, mark hamill coming back um, yeah. to be on the project whether or not he's alive i'd say there's a 90 95 percent chance that he's dead Five percent chance, I'd say, that he's probably still around somewhere since he told Kylo at the end of the film, "See you around, kid." Um, but then the one that really shocked everybody and made made people like question it was that Carrie Fisher was listed uh, yeah. on the cast. Yeah, I've been hearing rumors that they're going to use unused footage yeah, from Force Awakens, like they did in Rogue One. That's what they said. No, they didn't. Well, okay, yeah, they did use Rogue One used unused they, they footage used the, from New they Hope. Used, they, yes. they used the pilots, but yeah. Um, yeah, so Billy Lord, Carrie Fisher's daughter, has came out and said that this is what the family wants, that mm -hmm. they would like uh, 
this is how the Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher's legacy to go down in the Star Wars franchise is using that older, unused footage from Star Wars Episode Nine. Um, that's what the family wants. So regardless of whether or not they were just going to recast or CG, as long as Billy Lord and the, the, the Fisher family says that that's okay, I don't think anybody can argue with that. Yeah, yeah and um, I, I am interested to see how that kind of plays out. Um, because obviously her estate didn't, they did talk about doing CG, but her estate didn't approve that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and like recasting, it's like, uh, it's like, yeah. no, you can't. And then you also that. can't really kill her off in between eight yeah. and nine. Oh no, that'd just be insulting. So, um, and they kind of, there's a scene in The Last Jedi, which we'll talk about in a bit, but, you know, where we thought was like, oh shit, did they actually do it? You know, it's like that was kind of like a little because that was because it's earlier in the film, and it's like, you know, that's kind of a that's for maybe unfortunate timing, yeah, whatever. But then they didn't do it, but so it's like, huh, what are yeah. they gonna do? Because assuming I'm assuming that was in the film before she passed away, mm -hmm. that was at that wasn't added later, so that was just like, oh, who knows, yeah, so um. Yeah, I'm interested to see that. And uh, there were some newcomers I can't to the cast. Oh, Billy D. Williams is coming back as yep. well. Yeah, that's so, exciting. Yeah. Are they just going to kill him off? I don't know. I've never been a big fan of Lando. I liked him in Solo, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, there's not much to this character. Yeah. And then another uh, member of the cast that I'm excited for to come back is uh, the, I can't remember her name, um, but she plays the character Rose. I know she's Kelly, been kind Kelly of, Murray Tran. Mm -hmm. She's been under fire a lot. Yeah. Uh, in recent weeks, to where she's deleted some social media accounts, uh, yeah. given some of the backlash and the hate that her character specifically and just the Last Jedi in general has gotten. Yeah. So I'm glad that she's returning on the project. Yeah. Uh, and not let some of this online hate and um, scrutiny get to her. Well, I'm sure she was contractually obligated. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, speaking of contractually obligated, I was. Around the time that, that that was all going down, I kept seeing a, one or two articles stating that it wasn't the fam. It was just it was misguided backlash because they were they were claiming that uh, because of how J.J. Abrams handled the non disclosure agreements on the Force Awakens with his mystery box, it was a similar situation that her account came down because violating an NDA, so they took it down. That's hmm. what I've. That's what I've read outside of everything else. Hmm. Interesting. But again, they 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 didn't they didn't confirm it. They were just talking about how secretive J.J. Abrams was with the Force Awakens concerning the cast. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Okay. So uh, on to our next bit of news. Uh, Star Wars Episode Nine has officially begun production as of August first. Which is exciting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Obviously, they're going to release the cast. It was just days, like three, four days before um, that they released the information about Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. So right. it, it's about time. Um, I mean, the movie, what is it, still slated for May 2019? No, actually, it's been pushed back to December 2019. Okay. So we, so this is the longest we've had wait we've had since, for, uh, since Revenge of the Sith and The Force Awakens, where, where it's a year and a half, because Solo came out in May... Now they pushed it back to December 2019. So oh, what I love is that uh, I I appreciated that the fact that these new Star Wars films always came out in December. That mm -hmm. way, my folks and I have something to go see on Christmas Day because that's our tradition. Right. We go out and see a big movie. Like the first year we did it, uh, it was uh, oh dang it, was it Unbroken? Oh, about uh, about the World War Two soldier. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the correct name. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Uh, here, let me... Yeah, you guys continue. I'll look that okay. up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's... Um, it is interesting, and we can talk... We're going to talk... Go a little bit more into our dis in our discussion portion of this. Yes, it was um, unbroken. It okay. was unbroken. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit more into Star Wars in our discussion part of this episode, but um, on to our next bit of news. Ryan? So, the cast of Guardians in the Galaxy um, have written an open letter that they've posted online um, discussing how they want James Gunn to return to the as director of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is set to begin production this fall. Now, the, the cast, um, pretty much the entire cast has completely 
um, agreed with the letter. They've signed the letter, so that includes Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, uh, Michael Rooker, uh, Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, uh, and many more, including uh, James Gunn's brother, um, who does uh, who plays Craglin in the series. Um, hmm. He also does the on-set um, like mocap uh, for Rocket Raccoon. Um, he's also a part of this, um, and the way that they explain it in the letter is not that like, oh, that they're not excusing anything that he's said online or anything like that. Um, they're saying that Disney did not handle it properly because the news came out and the the tweets had resurfaced from James Gunn, and within twelve hours he was removed from the project. There was no investigation done um, hmm. or anything like that, which Disney just got out of an investigation with another uh, actor or director. Um, on another project, which they did do a long investigation on, they didn't handle the issue with James Gunn properly, which is kind of what um, they're set to really uh, set out for uh, with the letter. Hmm. Uh, who was the, what was the other investigation? Who was it on? I'm I not sure. Heard of this. I just remember it being referenced in an article I was looking at. I forget exactly who, but I know it was like another. It was a. It wasn't Marvel specifically. It was a Disney-owned studio. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Um, so, I mean, personally, I want James Gunn to come back. Um, yeah. I, I'm. I'm not excusing by any means the tweets that he said or the things that he had said a decade ago. Um, mm. But the the thing, my thing with it is, as a society, we want people to learn from their mistakes, grow from their mistakes, yeah. and when. He originally had said these about a decade ago, seven years ago, as when, like, the time frame of when all these were said. Um, he uh, publicly apologized for them, mm-hmm. and he said, you know what, this was stupid. Why am I saying this kind of stuff? And then he went and changed. And he went went ahead and just kind of resurfaced and redid, redid his uh, whole lifestyle. And um, Disney had to have been aware of the backlash of previous years when the tweets originally came out disney was fully aware of these tweets being public they had Mm -hmm. to have been again this is speculation on my part but considering how disney has a track record for keeping themselves squeaky clean at all times they had to have known yeah 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 and then i believe it was bob Iger or somebody um um, at disney who came out and did a public statement saying that they weren't kind of they weren't aware of the things that James Gunn had said or anything like that, which I don't buy at no. all. They're just no. trying to cover their butt on that. They're um, called background checks for a reason. Yeah. 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 Which, um, at the very least, I think we all agree. It's like, okay, at least give this guy a fair trial and investigation. So. Or, yeah. Like as a society like that, you kind of have to relate it to like, Oh, we if somebody does something wrong or they break the law or they do something stupid, they go to jail. They most of the time will correct what they've done and they've learned from their mistakes and come out a better person. Mm. James Gunn learned all of this ten years ago and he said, you know what, this was stupid. I'm quote suffering from idiot moron mouth <laughs> and he's going ahead and fixing it. And all of a sudden, these tweets are now resurfaced. They weren't hiding anywhere. They weren't digging. This person who revealed the tweets weren't digging for anything or anything like that. They were always public. Yeah. So why come out right before San Diego Comic Con and that be the biggest headline? Disney was very reactionary on it, yeah. um, and I don't think they handled the situation well at all. Right. Yeah, I can I can see that. Uh, he's definitely improved as a director because he didn't he also direct those awful Scooby Doo movies. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, did. he yeah. also did, he did. Uh, Slither, which I know is a I really good movie. I haven't seen that. Oh, it's kind of older. Mm. I, I think I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. What year did it come out? Uh, I'm not sure. I can look it up real quick. Oh, while well, Ryan is looking that up, we got a slightly. Uh, we got another piece of news to talk about. We've got. Are you guys fan for all our for all our listeners and viewers who are fans of McDonald's Monopoly game they have every so often. This story might be just for you. It, according to according to N, N, NME.com, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are making a movie about the multi-million dollar McDonald's Monopoly scam. Oh, okay, so now I get it, because uh, we talked to before we started recording. I told them that they already made a movie with um, Michael Keaton, but then I, I didn't, I, I must have, my brain, I, I must have, like, 
kind of shut off for a second when you mentioned the Monopoly part. I thought they were just making another movie about the McDonald's Corporation as a whole. No, they're so, not. They're back. The, the Monopoly scam. Yeah, I remember. I remember my old man and I used to, you know, go to McDonald's and you know we'd play that game. Sometimes we'd peel off our drinks or whatever. So, well. For those who don't know the story, it's a recent story about a former policeman who scammed McDonald's out of millions of dollars through the Monopoly game that they put out. Huh. Um, according, uh, according to an article by the Daily Beast, uh, former police officer Jerome Jacobson um, actually manipulated the game while he was working as a security guard where the game was printed. Huh. And this started back in 19, 1989. Wow. Hmm. And he, uh, he actually was sharing the profits with uh, a network of people, including mobsters. Uh, I haven't read this whole article, actually, but it says here he shared the profits with co-conspirators, including mobsters, uh, psychics, strip club owners, and drug traffickers. I want to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this now. Oh, it's like, huh, who, who, which one of the two, who, who's Matt Damon and... Uh, Ben Affleck gonna be that's uh, that's an interesting question I <laughs> almost wonder if Ben Affleck will just I mean I understand he's an actor and all that but he also does a lot of like directing oh yeah maybe he'll hey, just kind of sit this one out and direct yeah yeah he directed uh Argo Argo yeah. and then uh Live by Night okay. Affleck is set to direct according yeah, okay. to this article okay. and uh Damon will be p- portraying Jacobson oh this is gonna Good. Yeah, <laughs> Side note about Slither yeah. came out in 2006, has an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, I'll have to check that out. So, side note. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, um, now- and then our last bit of news uh, Transformers the movie, the 80s movie based on the Saturday morning cartoon, will briefly come back to theaters this September. Yep, uh, the classic Transformers movie, as according to Forbes.com, will be coming back for one night only, shown across 500 theaters in the U.S. this September. Interesting. And that is a direct quote from the article. Yeah. And actually, according to this article, uh, it'll be shown on September 27th at 7 p.m. at all those 500 theaters, and fans can pre-order tickets today, August 3rd, at the time of recording this podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so maybe, if you're hearing this on Monday, get going. And we may, uh, we may want to try and see if we can, you know, maybe all three of us. That'd be an interesting thing to do on this podcast. Oh, mm-hmm. so. I've just read further into this article. I know exactly. I know why they're doing this. Um, direct quote from Forbes. Along with seeing the movie newly remastered in high definition, fans will also get a sneak preview of the making of the new Bumblebee movie. Okay, maybe I'm not going to see it. <laughs> as well as a brand new interview with singer-songwriter Stan Bush performing performances of the theme, the songs The Touch and Dare. Okay. I don't know how that relates. I don't know how that relates, but that's on there. Is it bad that I'm excited for Bumblebee only because John Cena's in it? John Cena's in it? John Cena is in the film. He looks to be playing like a a, a military like like in a lot of the other Michael Bay Transformers movies, like the military is kind of made out to be the enemy because they want to shut down the. Uh, like no, they're the morons. <laughs> uh, and so John Cena uh, looks to be playing like the head military guy. Uh, well, I I love John Cena. Um, I loved him in Blockers. Yeah, I, I think only I still need to see that. The only good thing in the Fred movies. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, is it just me? A little a sidetrack from this new segment. Um, since we've come to our last piece of news, I've noticed with the Transformers movies, uh, you had Shia LaBeouf, then mm-hmm. you have Marky Mark. Yeah. Now we're gonna have John Cena, if Marky Mark still, in, if Marky Mark is in the bubble, is he gonna be in the Bumblebee no, movie? No, because Bumblebee is set to be a prequel. Okay. Oh. All righty. But there's something I've. This is a thing I've noticed with the Transformer movies, outside of what we all we said about them last time. About having less. How about having no character, as Tom put it? They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but they cast the actors that they cast either in their leads or as the main villains, like with John Cena being the head military guy. I don't know. There's just something a bit too recognizable about them. You know, like yeah. it's a yeah. bit too recognizable like, like to the, the detriment. Yeah, like um, who who was in the last? Who was that one suit guy in the last movie? Uh. I don't know. We, we we know who who we're talking about, right? I was, uh, Anthony Hopkins. I he I'm, yeah, yes. Um. Uh, was this the last night? 
Yeah. Okay, let me look this up real quick. Or no, it was or, yeah, last night. So. The last night's the one that came out last summer. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, but um, anyway, they always have these like suit guys. They're these really big stars, but they don't do anything. They're just, I think they just do it because they're dumb grandkids like those movies. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, that's that's a bit harsh, but Sir it's like, Edmund Burton played by Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins. An- Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna admit that I've seen the movie or that I own the movie. Me neither, good, but I own all of them. <laughs> Because they're a good... Tom here is turn, looking so a good little turn your brain off and, you know, it, it was Black Friday. I needed one more to get the, the 50% off or whatever, so I just had to do it. You couldn't have gotten something else. I, I, okay. <laughs> I don't I mind that turn I'm... your brain off movies. That's what I just saw yesterday, which we'll get into, but... Those movies... The Transformers... I hate those movies for what they stand for. They stand for that it doesn't matter how bad... how terrible critically they do as long as people go see them they'll keep making them and they still make billions of dollars and i can see the sentiment you have tom because i it's very questionable about a director when he says so what you'll still go see it exactly mm-hmm. that's why i because and these aren't like the worst films i've ever seen well okay By Tran- no. tr- transformers 2 is one of the worst films i've ever seen that film straight up makes no sense but robot heaven no but robot I, yeah heaven yeah and you know there there is some you know talk about what the behind the scenes aspect was that was like because that was during the writer strike. Um, really? Yeah. And they didn't. They like had one scene here, one scene here. None of them really correlated. So that's why it just it just it straight up makes no sense. I can't. That doesn't excuse it, but it's like okay. Anyway, before we get too off topic. But it, it, it's, last thing I'll say on the topic though is that I'm pretty sure I saw that they did cancel Transformer Six. So Did if they? that helps anything yeah, that, at all, that if... does help. Cause like, hopefully we only have a few more years left of Michael Bay like doing this. I don't know. Was, I don't know what. Oh, okay. I'm sure he's going to be tied to the Bumblebee movie if he's not directing. Yeah, so. I think he is a part of the Bumblebee movie. I'm not sure well, exactly what. Well, because it's like because he did he did the Ninja Turtles movies. He he's slowly, he produced those. Yeah. He's slowly moving out of the director's chair. I've noticed yeah. in these but recent years. But even still, it's like even with the, like the Ninja Turtle movies, I didn't see them. But it's like, yeah, they these are Michael Bay movies. Like I've they seen the first one. It's not great. Yeah, but, but again, it's not, it's not awful. awful. Yeah, 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 it's not. They're not awful, but yeah. they kind of stand as like a, a tech demo of what ILM can do. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, those turtles are awful. Those, <laughs> those, those designs are just. Well, why, here's my question. Why did they pr- replace Johnny Knoxville in the sequel? I saw both of these movies. I thought Johnny Knoxville actually did pretty good as Leonardo yeah. in the first mm-hmm. one. Fitchner would have been awesome. Or uh, Cam Clark. Or any of the 80s Turtles voice actors. Because yeah. they're still around. Rob Paulson, Cam Clark. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway. So, we don't go on a two-hour Transformers rant like I usually do. Uh, so, let's move on to what movies have we seen. So, uh, da da Movies we've seen this week or last time we recorded. Yeah. So, uh, Dylan, ooh. what have you seen? Uh, what I've seen, uh, Teen Titans Go, the movie. Teen Titans Go to the movies. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, for those who aren't familiar, uh, Teen Titans Go especially online, has a bit of a bit of a stigma going against it. Yeah. It's been considered pretty infamous for those who grew up with the original Teen Titans series. Uh, my personal opinion on it, I haven't seen a lick of it, so I can't really have a say on it. But uh, I'm, I'm in the camp who would prefer an origi- the original series, but yeah, that's just I me. Agree. Same. And if the, if the crew's having fun making the show... All the power to them, you know? Well, even then, they're, they're, they'll admit, yeah, it's a pretty stupid show. But anyway. We're... But the movie, I was pleasantly surprised. Hmm. Because I had seen, I hadn't seen everything properly, but I knew about the show and the kind of humor that it has. Yeah. So I went into it expecting, I was expecting some things, even though I haven't, even though I haven't watched the show. I got what I was expecting, but I was pleasantly surprised. There were actually some, mm-hmm. let me bring up my bullet points right here. Um, I think the thing that helped the movie was that it was very self-aware of the status it has with reviewers online and those who are fans of the original show. Hmm. Uh, but that was a kind of a double-edged sword. They're self-aware, but they indulge in what the show is known for. So they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Because there would be there was some, there was some lowbrow humor. Now, now uh, let me take that back. There was lowbrow humor 
but I laughed at some of the jokes because of how outrageous and how well set up they were. Mm-hmm. But there were some jokes where I was like, really? Like, really? You're trying to have your cake and eat it too, but you're being so self-aware of your of your status right now. And but an, and another good thing about the movie, it is fairly predictable, but not agonizingly predictable. They don't treat the audience as if they're dumb. They treat they kind of treat the audience like, yeah, we know you know we know you know where this is going. Just let us indulge in this moment for a joke or something. Mm-hmm. And like I said, some of the jokes work. Uh, There are a lot of self-aware meta jokes or the jokes are so out there you can't help but laugh. Like there's there's a dream sequence in there. I won't go into spoilers because it's just my reactions from it. There's a dream sequence in there with Robin that (laughs) it had me laughing out loud in the theater and -hmm. and my brother trying to shut me up. Okay. And yeah. the, it sounds pretty good from yeah. like what you're describing. It kind of makes me like remember the Lego Batman movie from last year. Exactly. Yeah. And like DC, like it doesn't have the best track record for their live action, but their animated stuff is really good. Yeah. I would say that this is a a, a rung under the Lego Batman movie, but oh, yeah. it is in the same vein. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh... I'm probably I am kind of interested, but I'm probably not going to see it in theaters. So I'll probably wait till it comes out on Blu-ray. I think Teen Titans Go is one of those movies where I should have gone when it first came out, just to see the general reaction from because I probably would have caught a lot more people my age there because mm-hmm. when I went there, there were just a bunch of kids. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Teen Titans Go is is targeted to kids, but yeah. it would have been inter- It's one of those movies where you sit down with a bunch of friends and you watch. I can yeah. tell that. Yeah, I might yeah. go see it because I'm a part of the AMC A list, so I get three movies a week, regardless of what they are. Mm. So I I might go see that, or I might go see, uh, like Mission Impossible or Christopher Robin, which came out today. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of good, a lot of good or decent movies uh, in the theaters yeah. right now. So, but um, and uh, one last pro, 2D animation. I love that it's making a comeback. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a that's. One thing I'll Even though some people have strikely start strikely different opinions depending on who you ask about Teen Titans Go, I'm glad that it's still it's using 2D animation and it's bring and it's bringing that back. Yeah. Outside of being a fan for it, that's why I adore the MLP movie because it was 2D. Yes, it was 2D animation and CGI mixed in, but at the end of the day, it was a 2D animated movie, and I love the fact that those are coming back in style. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. So, um, in other movies we've seen, uh, well, uh. Ryan and I, we both seen at different times. Uh, we saw Mission Impossible Fallout. So, and literally, that's all. Literally, the past three days, I've watched the last three Mission Impossible movies just to you know catch myself up. Only the last three. I, I saw the first three <laughs> like five years ago. I got it on DVD. Got them on DVD. Mm-hmm. But um, and uh, so um, I and I don't really have any interest in seeing them again, other than the behind the scenes, because yeah, you know, basically like um. What I thought of uh, Fallout is just like, yeah, that was that's entertaining, uh, fantastic action scenes. Probably not gonna see it again, so not really interested. Yeah, and the reason why I say only is because I had never seen before, like a week and a half ago. I had never seen a single Mission Impossible movie. Mm-hmm. So when I saw at work, we had the Blu-rays for seven eighty-eight for one through five, and they all came with eight dollar ticket vouchers to go see Fallout. I went ahead and I bit, I bit the bullet. I bought all of them, marathoned all of them before seeing Fallout. Not the smartest idea because I stayed up to like 3 a.m. watching <laughs> 4 and 5 and then went and saw Fallout at like 11.30. So I didn't really sleep that much. Mm. Um, when in all reality, I could have been fine with watching 3 through 5 and then Fallout. And yeah. you don't even need 3. You could do 4, 5, 6. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed Fallout. Um, I watched it in IMAX, so yeah. um, being able to see like the IMAX sequences, I'm a sucker for IMAX now. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed like the. It's not a spoiler because you there's online there's a behind the scenes thing on on their YouTube and there it's in the trailer the Halo jump sequence. Oh yeah. Um, at, towards the beginning of the film, that has to be my favorite sequence in the film. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because that's actually Tom Cruise jumping out of the plane and they're oh, yeah. actually filming that it's oh yeah the jump part of it is not cg yeah which is awesome yeah 
Kind of um, like he held on to that plane in that other fall, uh, Mission Impossible movie. I can't remember the I name of it. I think that was Rogue Nation. Yeah, was yeah, that, that Rogue that, Nation? That was the fifth one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's like, um, I like these movies, but it's like, I don't, there's not really, for me, much to them other than the action. I know other people. I've seen I've seen other people, you know, uh, hold them in like really high regards for like their story and their action and their characters. But it's like, I mean, the, they're not bad. They're they're serviceable to the story. Like I compare it a lot to like um like those formulaic like crime investigative shows like um uh, Criminal Minds, uh, uh, Law and Order, yeah, NCIS, well, however many CSI shows there are, uh, Bones. Um, it's like, and it's like I get invested when I'm watching them, but I don't really like the characters do a good enough story and characters do a good enough job to keep me invested to want to keep watching in the moment. But it's like I'm not really gonna remember what happened after, and I'm also I don't doesn't really keep want, make me want to come back and see it again. So um, which okay, and it's not a bad thing. I don't want to be too harsh on these because these films I see them as primarily to you know push the boundaries of of action and special effects which in that regard they succeed in you know as far as story and character goes they could do a lot worse they could do transformers yeah and like as another thing that i like there's two things that i really like about the mission impossible movies and especially like this one um is the use of practical oh effects. yeah yeah like they got they got a lot better with that like the you, you've seen the first one yes and you know the the tunnel chase mm -hmm. that was all none of that was real that yeah. was all that that was 98 99 it was 88. I don't no, know. No, I, no, 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 those, those came out in the 90s. You keep talking, I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the other thing that I, I really enjoyed um, about, like, Mission Impossible Fallout and just, like, the, the overall series, like, sometimes you'll get, like, a really good movie and then they just kind of start, in terms of, like, ratings and box office numbers, they start to either go down or stay stagnant. Mm -hmm. um, Mission Impossible Fallout, the, the newest one, um, has the highest rating on Rotten Tomatoes and has made more uh, opening week in box office. So they're improving with, with each film, oh, yeah. which is always a yeah. good thing to see. Yeah, and the, the 96. Film, 96. Mission Impossible. Oh, 96. That's, that's right, 96. Um, so, yeah. I apologize. You're good. No, you're um, fine. <laughs> but it, yeah, that's why we have I, Google. I, I will say the um, the films have gotten better because the first three, I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen them in a long time, and I'm probably not going to see them again. Uh, they were they were just kind of eh, uh, even like because Doug Walker or Nostalgia Critic did, reviewed the second one. Um, I don't, did you see that, Dylan? I do not remember. I'll have to look that up. Well, well, he did it just recently. Oh, oh, recently. I I've not seen and it then. And some people like regard it as like it's so bad it's good. But even that, I don't really remember it. Like because like I said. In, that, that, like that's the thing. I, that's another thing. I don't remember a lot of these movies. I don't remember what happened other than the action scenes. Um, but the Except that one was, the second and third one, I don't really remember anything from. I remember the tunnel chase scene in the first one, and the scene where they're in the one room where Tom Cruise is on the harness in mm -hmm. the first movie. And then I've the, never seen any of the. I've never seen any of the first three. I've only seen the latest. Yeah, I've yeah. only seen the latest two before yeah, yeah, Fallout. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people regard the third one as a really, really good one, but I'm like, I really enjoy that one. Yeah, it. Uh, I'm just like, uh, I mean, like, there's like. Like, okay, it's cliche. The the thing that kills a movie for me is cliches, like, overuse of cliches. Like, oh, well, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? Oh, I know what's going to happen, and then that's what happens. I'm like, yeah. The thing I didn't know about Mission Impossible 3 before I actually start watching it, and you see, like, the opening credits and all that, I didn't know it was directed by J.J. Abrams. Yeah, yeah. I completely yeah, yeah, just his, didn't know that. Yeah, his, uh, uh, he hasn't, I think he produced ghost protocol or yeah. well his production company you know is is you know makes those movies now mm -hmm. do you remember any lens flares from three i do well how did you not know it was jj well at the beginning there's not that many lens flares but then after i see the jj abrams name every lens flare like was just stabbing me right in the face yeah <laughs> well, I, like I said i don't i don't remember the third one i just i just don't i don't remember much i remember philip seymour hoffman I remember Tom Cruise. Um, that's like the free that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> you remember Tom Cruise? That's like the free space on a bingo card. It's like <laughs> Mission Impossible. I remember Tom Cruise. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed them. Um, but again, I'm probably not gonna see them again. I'll probably I'll watch the action scenes like on YouTube. I'll probably get the DVD, maybe the Blu-ray, just to watch behind the scenes because I'm like, how the heck do they do all this stuff? Because like that's really Tom Cruise flying in a helicopter. 
Yeah. You know, it's there's amazing. a 360. Like if any any of you at home or here um, have mm-hmm. like a VR headset, there is a 360 degree behind the scenes video of Tom Cruise actually flying the helicopter. Hmm. So you can put like your phone or whatever in like a VR headset. Um, flip it to like the VR mode on the 360 video, and then it's almost like you're sitting in the back of the helicopter with Tom Cruise, hmm. which I'm sure is a lot of people's dreams to be flown in a helicopter by Tom Cruise, being yeah. chased by Henry Cavill. I, I I liked Cavill in this, or well, he I won't go into spoilers, but um... was Simon Pegg as enjoyable as he always is? Yeah, I love Simon Pegg. Like, he's he's like the Simon parts that I remember from Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy him. Yeah, I like Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg's good. Uh, Jeremy Renner's not in this movie, actually. Which was weird. Yeah. But he like, was probably out playing tag or playing with the Avengers. Or yes. <laughs> yeah, I read, I, yeah, I read... Yeah. <laughs> like, topical, topical. I, I love what you did there, Ryan. Yeah, um, yeah that's... Um, I read an article, like, that's... The, among, that's probably a reason why he wasn't in this movie so mm-hmm. that i thought that was weird but i mean they're probably saving him for i i don't know if they're gonna do another mission impossible but um it's kind of like ving rames because he was in like the last five minutes of ghost protocol so i just gotta ask is mr baldwin still around yeah he, yep. he is oh. yeah he is <laughs> all right so um yeah there's that so um because i need i need my alec baldwin yeah no. and i'm not gonna get it from the boss baby <laughs> hell no yeah, yeah. and um i think the, um that's all about that's one thing i like about doing this podcast is because you know i have an excuse to see more movies now because even though i am a movie guy it's just like i keep myself busy and i you know it's like okay i need to put time aside to watch movies watch so, movies so. talk about them, i love going like to not. the theater I, I do too it's just you know i you know, i keep myself busy but anyway so and i think that'll be good for me to like find a balance with that and uh, so anyway uh, i think if none of us have anything else any other movies we've seen um i mean i rewatched avengers infinity war for like the fifth time the other yeah. night because the digital came out yeah i've uh, been watching a lot of like the the behind the scenes and the featurettes but also i'll save that for next week and yeah. for the review yeah um, you want to talk about the stray? Stray. The stray. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, since 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 the commentary is taking a bit a bit longer than I anticipated, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can, um, if we, we can at least have something to yeah, point him towards. A, we can do a quick little mention of that. And um, by the way, we can um, just uh, for the podcast sake, we can you know each of us can take like little segments of this and like upload it to our own channels. Like if there's one thing, because like I know eventually I want to talk about Dark Force and things like that, and um, I've actually, and I've put like a little, we can also take segments, like five seconds for like our intros to our videos. So, and then go to the real video, like link yeah. to the podcast in the description. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Roger. anyway so. Uh, the Stray, a uh, couple, uh, about a few months ago, Tom and I went to a convention called Days of the Dead here in Indiana. Yeah, my first convention, actually. Yep. And did you enjoy yourself? I loved it. <laughs> yep. Time of my life. Oh, it was fun, man. It was like, uh, for those who are familiar with the uh, video game convention Too Many Games, it was essentially the horror version of Too Many Games. Yeah. So much memorabilia, so many stars were there. Ernie Hudson was there. Uh, uh, Ted Raimi was there. Oh, yeah. The voice actor behind Skeletor yeah. was there. Jeremy Bullock was there. Got yep. an autograph from him. And I got a, I got a, I got a free picture from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did. Uh, a little. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, we found uh, this booth. Tom and I found this booth called Open Sign Productions. We got to talking with a couple of the guys. One guy in particular named Cam Clark, yep. who's a filmmaker with the company, and they're all about helping filmmakers here in the just helping filmmakers get up and running. Yeah, they got a dream. They'll help you make it happen. Yeah, we met a couple of filmmakers there. So others we'll probably talk about because there's a film festival north that we might uh, go to in so. october actually yeah yeah but we'll talk about that on another episode but um, the halloween episode yeah <laughs> but anyway um but uh they had a few they had a tele they had a show that they call uh, phobia which uh, deals with a lot of different phobias on dvd there but they also had a few films cam's first film directorial debut was actually sitting there and how he described it to me and we went over this in the commentary was zombies in the west in Viet- during Vietnam, except it wasn't. Uh, you will get that in the commentary. It wasn't. Um, I haven't talked to him about this. I, pr- I probably should, because um, I know you have. You've talked a little bit about us doing the commentary and yes. what we said in the commentary. So. Oh, I haven't told him anything specifically. Oh, well, yeah, but you know, he he's, he didn't. He has like 
oh, it, it, it sucked, didn't it? You know? Yeah, he, he yeah. We we hit Cam pretty hard during the commentary. You know, it, it's all about it's all in love because you know, and uh, whenever we do commentaries on this channel or any basically anything that involves indie filmmakers, um, we're doing it out of love, you know, because we we are indie filmmakers, we're aspiring indie filmmakers, um, and we and, fully expect you to be that critical oh, yeah, of yeah, our yeah. work as well. Absolutely. So. Um, but and we wouldn't be doing that because if we didn't if we didn't really like this guy we didn't respect this guy we would not show him at all whether or not we liked it or not um, because like I said there's there's people out there um, a couple people out there that I that I just will not give any attention to good or bad I won't review um, one person you might in particular you know um, Dylan Roger but to the stray yeah if you want to watch. A very weird take on a zombie film. If you're so mm -hmm. used to how a zombie film goes, look up The Stray. Yeah. It does play into a lot of what normal zombie movies do. Yeah. And there is a point where we kind of fall off with one of the characters because of a decision and a concept yeah. that's introduced. But it is a weird one that you should take a look at. Yeah. Yeah. It. Um... For what we got, I enjoyed it, but there there were things that could have been improved yeah. or changed around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I don't think we should go into too much detail because it's like it's in the it's in the writing or in the commentary that will yes. be coming up. Um, and we'll put that. On, we're gonna do it on this channel, huh? Are we gonna upload it to this channel. We can do that. Yeah, okay, we can do that. So cool. Uh, but but uh, that we'll talk about uploads and future projects in, later on in the segment yeah. and in the other episodes. So For now, let's move on to movie discussions are you ready to go into the doghouse fellas <laughs> okay yeah sure we're gonna be talking about star wars the, the last, last jedi, jedi. <sighs> okay so... never has a film garnered so much controversy and division like... yeah, yeah more division even than the prequels it, yeah that's what i was gonna say it's like i haven't heard too many people say this outright but it seems like that pe the people who didn't like this movie hate it more than they do the prequels. Because for the longest time, like, let's put into perspective how divided people are on The Last Jedi. Yeah. When the prequels came out, it wasn't hate at first sight. People loved them initially, but it took years later for people to come back yeah. and start noticing some things. Generally. Yeah, generally. And then for the longest time, the general consensus is that the prequels were utter garbage. There, But there are good things about yeah, them. They, and yeah. they seem to have leveled out, with, especially with the younger generations, and it's interesting to see how the new films will play out too, but... But that's the key difference. With the prequels, it was a shifting kind of... It was a shifting... Yeah. Uh, it was... Yeah, I'm gonna say this for the third time. It was the reactions were shifting. They shifted over time. Yeah. They weren't. They weren't yeah. all for, and then at the same time equally against. They were all for, shifted to against, and then mellowed out over the years. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. the Last Jedi, it was immediate. Like yes, it, like, it was like right out of the gate. Yeah, there was no no transition or really anything. Um, so, but uh, to get into what we thought. Um, I certainly have things to say. Yeah. Brian, do you want to say? Yeah, so, like, uh, Tom and I saw this opening night together. Yeah. Um, we, we saw it, like, the, the Thursday night, 9 p.m. showing. Yeah. Um, so it, we were some of the first people to get to see the movie, because I know a lot of people wait for, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever. Um, overall, like, I remember us coming out of the movie, and we, we said, uh, and I, I remember whether it was me or you or whatever, we kind of agreed that it was, at the time, better than The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. is, like, what our first reaction was. Yeah. Um, and we were it, all genuinely happy with the movie. Yeah, if you saw, um, for those who follow me on Stardust, you probably saw, like, our like our jaws are, like, wide open, like, wow, that was... I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so, but what do, what do we think now? I don't know. Mm, like, yeah. it's divisive. I understand a lot of the hate. I understand where a lot of people are coming from. But at the end of the day, it's not, like, Jar Jar Binks bad. Well, I don't well they think. saved that for Solo, but... <laughs> yeah, and, like, the, my biggest complaint with it is whether you love The Last Jedi or you hate The Last Jedi, I don't necessarily agree at all with the boycott of Star Wars or boycott of Kathleen Kennedy or the the Disney Star Wars franchise 
because I will say that Solo is a better film than The Last Jedi. I don't think that The Last Jedi's hatred online or boycott should have affected Solo the way that it did, but it did. Well, it's like, because that's an interesting thing and um, something that I like to see like a shift in, you know, because people didn't like The Last Jedi. They didn't go see Solo, because Solo didn't do very well. No. Um, it lost money, which was the one of four Disney-produced films to actually lose money at yeah. the box office. Yeah, and it's interesting because, and maybe this is kind of like the beginning of like a shift. I mean, I could be wrong, but it's like, maybe we'll see like, people were, were starting to demand more. And um, after this whole, like, after the whole controversy with The Last Jedi and Solo not doing very well, it, and, and seeing how Disney has responded, because around um, late June, they announced they're bringing back Star Wars The Clone Wars. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just and just a few weeks ago, we got the trailer yeah. for The Return of Clone Wars. They haven't given us a, a release date yet, which is fine. They're probably going to push it back to next year. So, and they're, by the way, they're going to finish... Um, the rest of season six, I don't know if they're going to do another season, depending on how much they had left to, to do. So, because they can't, they canceled it right after um, the clone, the right after they bought Disney, or right after Disney bought Lucasfilm. And then there were a few uh, episodes that were kind of scattered about considered lost logs or missions. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the first 12 episodes of the six seasons were released on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then there were other episodes that they didn't finish that they didn't animate or finish animation or textures, um, which some of you can find on YouTube, which I have seen. Excuse me. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which kind of sucks because I kind of already know some of the stuff that's going to happen. But, um, and I've looked into, like, because I didn't know they were ever going to bring that back. You know, it's just like, well. And they do it, like, just as about the 10th an the tenth anniversary of when the Clone Wars first came out, um, starting with the film in and 2008. And I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but um, anyway, back to the Last Jedi. So, um, before I say anything, Dylan, what did, what do you what are your thoughts then, and what are your thoughts now on it? My initial reaction when coming out of the theater was that I had a good time. I did enjoy it. There were there were a couple of moments I was like, what? Yeah. But overall, I did enjoy it. Like uh, one of the biggest things I would have said about it after seeing it in the theater was like uh, Disney. You're have uh, the issue you had you the issue you had with Thor Ragnarok is uh, seeping into Star Wars the like comedy the, yes yeah. yes like uh, like at the beginning with Poe it's like well, it's, uh, a prank well, call. you even finish before I say anything okay like a, a, pr a prank call you you could have had you could have had the guy on the other end respond differently so we didn't think he was like we didn't a, think a he was a idiot. Uh, yes yes like uh, there was a guy on. Uh, you've seen it. You've seen the. Re you showed me the review. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the guy who did like um, a like a three part review of it. Each one's like an hour and however many minutes. Mahler. Yes, Mahler. That's his name. So, um, yeah, it's and I'll talk about him in a bit when I start. But um, Mr. Plinkett, Red Letter Media, you need to get your A game on because the trope of doing hour long reviews of Star Wars films. You've kind of fallen behind, so because like yeah. I've seen like how many people have done like hour long reviews of this movie? God, I, I think outside of Mueller, I think I've only seen. There's like there's a, another guy that I I started watching, but I'm like oh, okay, this guy's like mm, this guy's mm, no, this guy's he's not like he's just like complaining, not critiquing. There's a difference, but anyway. Um, but yeah, like the whole the whole scene with Poe at the beginning, like. Poe, I didn't mind that he was doing that to cause a distraction. It was just the reactions. You turn, you turn this guy who's supposed to be second in command into a bumbling idiot. Yeah, it's like how am I supposed to take him seriously if he gets stumbled by a prank call? Okay, but um, and then uh, I think for the, I think that was the biggest glaring issue with the comedy. There might have been another point. I haven't seen this since I left the theater. Really, actually. So there may be some things that aren't fresh in my mind, but I do remember the comedy being an issue. Mm -hmm. And then there was just uh, what, what was the name of the girl the, of the lady with the purple hair? Haldo. Haldo. Yeah. That that didn't He's, that didn't sit right with me at, yeah. at the theater. Yeah, she's been uh, given like a lot of names, like by sample gender studies, which um, 
just a disclaimer, we don't like to get political on the round table because that's not what this show or this channel is about. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of, like, well, not a lot, but it's like there's, 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 you know, people out there on the internet saying, oh, there's, like, this political message, this, you know, this this direction, swinging in this direction. And, like I said, that's not what this show's about, so we're not going to get into that. So oh, that's not what I was going to get into. Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying that, but it's just, like, I'm just saying, like, for people watching and listening, it's like, we're not going to talk about that. That's, that's not that. If you do want something take. on that spectrum, you can look up plenty on yeah, YouTube yeah, from both there's, sides. There's other people, but... Uh, but the they set up with uh, Pope, they set up the lesson that you sometimes have to trust your superiors. Yeah. But they botched that lesson because because she wouldn't tell him what she was going to do. That yeah. It's like, you're going to yeah. get people killed if you do that. Yeah, and like... Um they're saying like oh you can't be like over reckless or something because that's his arc but it's like yeah. you know it's like it, like you have to be at a certain time but it's like at the end it's like not when they they're about to retreat but it's like when they're on the field it's like uh yeah you kind of do it's like like this is kind of mixed you know what i mean it's like you telling him not to be reckless but you're kind of being reckless yourself by not saying anything yeah yeah um so what what are you what are your thoughts now well, unfortunately, my thought... Well, not not unfortunately. I'm not going to say that because mm-hmm. I've been ta- I've been taking in a lot of other people's oh, yeah. views on the points. And that's a good thing. You yeah. always should seek out people, ac- someone across the aisle yeah. just to see what you're thinking, see how that might change or strengthen or inform your opinion. Because yeah. sometimes your opinion can't come to fruition unless you hear the other side. Right. So right now... I think it's a. I would think I would describe it as a bit of a. A cluster that looks pretty. Hmm. I think that's how I would describe the Last Jedi pretty. right now. Yeah. Because there was another thing that I didn't really think about until I started looking at other people was mm-hmm. Luke. Now I'm kind yeah. of half and half on how Luke yeah, was yeah, portrayed yeah. in this film. On the island, for the most part, I thought, yeah, okay, I can see Luke being bitter after all these years. I can't un- I can't understand him wanting to kill his nephew because well that I can well I'll I'll just just finish up with saying I'll I'll comment on that because uh, this is Luke Skywalker we're talking about yeah. this is the guy who saw the good in Darth Vader yeah. when everyone else was telling him there's nothing left, was telling him no yeah okay. I should have there should have been at least there should, uh, well, it, the way that I would kind of fix that for myself is just just to have something that shows Luke that even having hope, yeah, like have like have him do something that mm. hope no longer exists, something that would push him, not just a vision, because right, he, because a vision uh, can be changed. A vision can be changed. Yeah. And, um, so I it, there should have been like an attempt on his part yeah, to yeah. change his path, and then have the moment of hopelessness where he has to take up his saber against his nephew. Well, well, it's like I, I do have a little bit of disagreement with that, but I'll get into that. But just, just, just wrap up. You know, bottom line: what are your thoughts on the movie now? My thoughts: it, like I said, it's a cluster that looks pretty. Some good bits, some questionable bits. Right. But for overall, I'm not, I'm not in the camp that despises it. Like, yeah. like with all the vitriol and everything, I can see where I can see where they're coming from. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not in the. The oh my god worst movie camp. It's yeah, just, I think it's it's, it's a it's a it's a complicated film to talk about. Yeah, it is. So um and if, um so just to get into what I thought. So like as, like Ryan said, we saw it opening night. Um and uh, if you saw the Stardust, whoops, if you saw the Stardust um, video, um you know that we were like in sh- you know it was like wow this is so awesome. So uh, I saw it twice in the theater. Uh, Ryan, you saw I it? I saw it twice as well. Twice. I wanted to do a third a third round, but time didn't allow it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I saw it twice in the theater. And uh, I'll admit, after the, the second time, I was just like, yeah, okay, I don't really need to see this again. Which is, which kind of, which at the time I was like, kind of like questioning, well, why, why am I thinking that? Because I saw The Force Awakens three times. Um, sure. Mostly because just, you know, family and friends wanted to see it. But uh, I was like, I want, like, yeah, I want to see this a third time. I wanted to see, I only saw Rogue One once. I wanted to see it a, a, a second and probably a third time. But it's like, you know, I was waiting for, you know, family, member, everything. But uh, I've talked about that privately. But um, 
And then uh, I didn't. I only saw Solo once. I wanted to see it, but I don't think it was in theaters that long. It didn't no, seem it's, like it. It's like what four or six weeks. It was only. In it was a yeah, shorter roughly. run because I know some theaters, like still to this day, are playing Infinity War, which yeah. came out and then, month around the or so before um, Solo, because Solo came out Memorial Day weekend. Seriously? Yeah. And then yeah. uh, Avengers came out like the last week of April. Yeah. So, Damn. like, odds are by this point, this week, Infinity War is not in theaters anymore. It's probably at, like, a dollar movie or a cheaper theater. Yeah. Um, but Solo wasn't around that much. Yeah, which is interesting. But anyway, back to, so, and uh, I watched it again another time, another night, and then I watched it uh, recently as I, when I was on my vacation. It's, like, one in the morning, I couldn't sleep. Um. And I'm not going to lie, each time I watch it, it got worse. And so, um, after seeing it multiple times, seeing the reviews, um, I'll say it's okay. But only just. So. Yeah. Man, uh, I wanted to ask you, since you, you said you had a disagreement about the whole uh, Luke yeah, and his yeah. nephew. Okay. What, what I, were you meaning the, by that? The, the, the whole thing in general is not a bad idea oh i, because, I won't say yeah, that's a bad because, idea like, it's just okay, the execution like, like okay yeah he had like this moment of instinct and like like he's like okay because he's trying to prevent another darth vader yes so that's fine and you know anybody's like no he's my nephew i can't do it and then everything then everything goes to shit what doesn't work is that he just gives up like no that that's not luke skywalker no you know, like, like he, he saw just the tiniest amount of good in Vader and, you know, and there had been more hope for Ben because, you know, he'd only just turned, whereas exactly. Vader had been in there for, what, 20 some years. Yeah. So it, it just it doesn't it doesn't work. There's not. OK, if there has to be more to it than just that, like. I don't know, something involving, like, Luke's wife or his son or something. Exactly. That's what I was saying earlier. Uh, I mean, I didn't say this specifically. The execution was what I had issue with. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, um, yeah, we can talk about, you know, Haldo and everything, but, um... I think that, I think Halden's been talked to about... Yeah, to yeah. Death. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's also, like, the, the just the story around the 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 story of the of the last jedi and the new films it's like okay there's one thing i don't buy is you know at the beginning of the last jedi there's the the resistance you know evacuating their base and then there's uh the first order just showing up out of nowhere i'm just like now if, now when i first saw this i didn't think about this but then as i've seen the reviews i'm like wait this doesn't make any sense because the first order is supposed to be like just like a portion of the galaxy they're not the empire yet so it's like they just got their base destroyed their huge planetary base destroyed and now they're launching a full-scale invasion i'm like uh i feel like we missed the scene here this doesn't yeah this doesn't make any sense yeah, i think what would have helped the film is they would have had abrams write and direct all three hmm because I know the original plan was Abrams for seven, Johnson for eight, and then I believe Colin Trevorrow yeah. for uh, nine. Now J.J. Abrams is doing nine. I think it just helps with the trilogy to just make it consistent. Yeah. Or have one vision instead of skewed visions. Yeah. And... Because there were things that J.J. Abrams set up in Force Awakens that Ryan actually kind of threw out. Exactly. Yeah, and with, um, the, with... that... Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that's not a... a... A bad thing, but it's like, uh, you know, Ryan wanted to subvert the expectations of the audience, but I think he confused that with doing nothing, like with Snoke, like, or like with Ray's parents, okay, I'm like, I'm kind of on the fence, I don't really like particularly how it was handled, but it's like, I, I'm fine with her being not tied to anybody else, because like, that kind of mystifies the force, Yeah, you know, it's like, because it can be in anyone, so, but uh, it, with Snoke, it's like, Okay, you don't have to have him be Darth Plagueis or anything, you know, but, you know, and, like, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, we didn't know anything about Palpatine, but it's like, yeah, but there was more to him. Yeah. You know, he was the emperor and Which everything. Got and got out of his chair. Yeah, not counting the, 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 even not counting the prequels, but even with the prequels, the prequels help Palpatine. Yeah. You know, they help his character, they develop his character, you know. Yeah, he we, did stuff. Yeah. 
yeah, we can you know we can talk about you know you know what the prequels did wrong and everything. But here's the thing: at least it wasn't nothing. You know, it was something as opposed to nothing. You know, you know. I'm not saying he, again he doesn't have to be like Plagueis or whatever other you know predictions there were, but it's like you had to do something with him. You know, like like okay, like show how he corrupted Ben Solo. I'm just like, well, he, Luke was like, Snoke had already gotten to him. Like, like when? How? How? Well, how? Where did Snoke fit into all this? You know, where did Snoke fit into, like, The Last Jedi? How did he know Luke? Or how did he fit into everything? My biggest issue is, like, at the end of Seven, we leave with Rey on the island, and the last shot is the helicopter shot of Rey holding out the lightsaber to Luke, yeah. which... That's how we want the film to open. Yeah. It pretty much opens with that. Yeah. A lot of people are like, okay, well, where? How, how does Luke react? What does Luke do to seeing his old lightsaber that he hasn't seen since Empire, by the way? Supposedly. Supposedly, yes. Mm -hmm. And he just grabs it and throws it behind yeah. his shoulder? Like, like really? I... Is that the best that they have? Yeah. And comedically, too. It's like, the music stops and he's like... That's just way too Marvel. Yeah. And... I understand that, and I, I touched on this last week and last week's episode, uh, they're wanting to build, like, bigger cinematic universes and have yeah. this one interconnected universe. You don't have to relay Marvel comedy into Star Wars. I don't think, yeah. like, that moment for me completely took me out of the movie. Yeah, uh, I won't lie. Um, which, uh, and, like, for cinematic universes, that could work for Star Wars because, like, there's an infinite amount you could do with that. Mm -hmm. But... It's like, again, we don't... No, no, I'm totally gone, sorry. You guys remember the laundry scene? The what? The laundry scene where Ben is pressing his... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, was, that got a laugh out of me, but I'm like... Cool. Yeah, I, I like the I like the way the perspective worked on that, but, I was, but I'm like... But I was sitting there like, well, that just happened. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that could have been cut and should have been left in, like Luke mourning the loss of Han. I'm just like, well, that should have been left in. Yeah, I was yes. like, well, yeah, Ryan, that should have been left. But like these guys have been through thick and thin for yeah. years, and yeah. I think you have a stronger reaction, like yeah. Than that. See, like this is the thing. It's like back to what I was saying about like um, the story around the Last Jedi. Like okay, or, or the story around the new films. It's like the it's like there's the New Republic, and like. So they were just all around one planet, like they or those four or five planets they blew up. That was all the Republic. That was all the fleet. It's like, so what? What? Ha where's the rest of the fleet? Why? Why aren't they coming to help the resistance? And why is there a resistance in the first place? See, this is why I think what the, what the sequels, you know, who am I to say what they should have done? But I think they should have been like the the ten or so years leading up to these films would have been a much more interesting movie. You know, like, okay, you can if you want to have Ray be one of the Jedi, you know, Luke's students, and Ben be there as well. Kind of have the you know the Kylo Kylo and Ray friendship or whatever. Kind of like Obi Wan or Anakin, and see it go wrong and everything. And Luke, it, you know, it, assuming it's done better, run off. You know that I think that would have been a much more interesting movie, and maybe we could have seen you know Luke and Han in a scene together. So one last time, definitely. So. And, you know, like, the First Order is the one trying to regain power. And uh, uh, Red Letter Media brought this, made this idea, like, the Republic builds Starkiller Base. Because wouldn't, that, doesn't that make more sense? Like, because, like, how did they get the funds to do that? You know, and, you know, you could, exactly. say, you could say, like, uh, oh, money doesn't matter. But it's like, you know, look at the Phantom Menace. Like, the whole, this whole thing was started because the Republic didn't know how to tax trade routes. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is so funny to yeah, think yeah. about. But it, yeah, but it also, everything in Star Wars started because of taxes. Yeah, but it also and because Qui Gon couldn't afford a hyperdrive, <laughs> or couldn't go to a currency exchange. Nope. But anyway, um, and because mind games couldn't work on this one alien. Yeah, um, but then it also the one thing is um, oh, totally gone. Uh, what was it? Uh, the time leading up it. The time in between. Yeah, I, I remember what I was gonna say. Now. Okay. Um. Uh. The okay. The after the the Battle of Jakku, which we see, you know, the remains in the first in episode seven. 
you know, race getting up to that. And this is why it doesn't make this. What I'm about to say doesn't make sense because the, after that, the Republic led by Mon Mothma disarmed the Republic forces, and I'm like, why? Because, because okay, it, the old Republic didn't have an army because they had the Jedi who kind of marshaled the galaxy, but when, but in the new Republic. They don't have a, the Jedi Order. They have Luke's, you know, you know, training, but they're not enough to police an entire galaxy. No. And you know the the, and then the First Order, you know, they're kind of off in the background, the last remnants of the Empire. And then they all of a sudden just kind of like give up. I'm like, no, this this doesn't work because the 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 Republic built out of restored out of the rebellion that fought, you know, God knows how long. To restore it, to defeat the Empire, they just kind of give up and say, no, we're not going to you know, take action against the First Order. We're not going to make sure they don't rise up again. Like, I don't buy this. Like, these politics are dumber than the ones in the prequels. So, yeah, that's, that's why it doesn't make sense. So Again, that's why I describe it as a cluster that looks pretty. Yeah, it's, uh, it, part of me, like... The, the the child in me loves these movies, but then the critic filmmaker part of me just like just like hates these movies. Have you watched the on the Blu-ray the uh, the director and the Jedi feature? It? It's like a two-hour documentary. I, I have, no, I haven't seen that. But I, I think like the reason why I'm okay with the movie and why I'm not like as negative on the film as a lot of people are is because I actually took the time to sit down and watch that feature. It. Mm-hmm. To me, I think it helps, like the the case of the Last Jedi, because you see that, like they're they're not set out to make a bad movie. No, no, I'm and not saying that, that Ryan all. Johnson, like he's literally just like a little kid enjoying, yeah, yeah. A- enjoying making the the Star Wars movies and all that, and how excited he gets over little things. I don't know if he was the best person to direct this yeah, movie. Yeah, well, he, the movie. well, he, they probably should have someone else wrote write the film. Because, you know, he was the writer-director in him. It was interesting because he had, doesn't have... He's a relatively newcomer. Yeah. Because the only film that got a widespread attention was Looper that he r- wrote and directed, I think. Um, yeah, and then he was also... He also did the, the Fly episode of Breaking Bad as well as yeah. uh, Ozymandias, which yeah. is one of my favorite episodes yeah. of Breaking Bad. Yeah. And I am assuming they're still gonna do it because he's is he's gonna do his own trilogy. Yeah, I'm sure that they've already signed contracts yeah, or yeah. deals or whatever. Yeah. Because there were rumors that they're halting all other productions of Star Wars, but I again that was just a rumor. Yeah, Disney's yeah. not. But outside of the James Gunn situation, Disney is not a reactionary company like that. Yeah, but um, it, it is. Uh, well, totally on. Well, that was a discussion and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's move on to our filmmaking segment. So. Yes, where do ideas come from? You see, when your brain and your heart <laughs> love each other very much. Uh-huh. Dylan, I think this is the wrong subject yeah. for the wrong podcast. Yeah. <laughs> wrong channel. Okay, so uh, where ideas come from. So I, uh, I brought this idea up, you know, to do this episode. So um, I guess I'll just kind of you know, in our real life segment. So I guess I'll just kind of give like, um, this is not an idea I'm going to put through to fruition just now. It's just an idea to kind of like lock away, write down in a notebook and kind of keep it locked away in the brain for a future film. So, um, so where this particular one came from, I've been talking to this, uh, one girl that I met on a dating website a few months ago and we've been talking for a while, been, you know, hitting up pretty well. And, um, so, Oh, are you going to say something, Dylan? Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Shut up, Dylan. <laughs> okay, anyway, so um, so this this one guy I work with um, at my part-time job, he works in the meat department. I work elsewhere. And he was, um, yeah, he and I were talking. It was on break. So, and, uh, you know, he's asking me, oh, when y'all going to meet? Oh, when y'all going to meet? And I was like, uh, I don't know, you know, at some point. But anyway, um. So he was just like, "Oh yeah, you vanilla types are pretty, uh, are pretty bland." And I'm like, "What?" Because I didn't quite understand what he said. I didn't quite hear him. And then I'm like, 
uh, can you say that again? And I was like, kind of had to badger him to like say what he said again. Cause he's like, no, 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 no. I was like, so I got him to say it again. And he said, um, uh, vanilla that we, her and I were vanilla kind of people, which I'll actually, let me pull up something real sick. Padding, 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 mm. padding, padding, padding. Maybe. God, there's so many messages. Sorry about this, folks. Might have to cut this out. Do, do, How long do. have we been going, Dylan? We yeah. have been doing... Um, over an hour. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. That's pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, here it is. Okay. So then he pulls up... The guy that I was talking to pulls up this definition of vanilla on the Urban Dictionary. Mm-hmm. Um, unexciting, normal, conventional, boring... And then the second definition is the opposite of kinky. No way involved with the, um, well, just look at it. Yeah. Uh, we don't want this get, video to get flagged or anything. So, but I, anyway, you get the point. So, and then I was like, huh. And then I looked down and I, and I realized, well, of course I knew this at the time, but it's like I realized that I was eating French vanilla yogurt. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I was like, huh, that, that. That just at the time that just kind of seemed like a random like movie moment, like that would just kind of clever movie moment that would just happen. So, kind of like you know character how like the certain color clothes characters wear. Mm -hmm. So I'm like hmm. So I I wrote that down and then just kind kind of stored away you know for like a scene in another movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that was interesting. So. Um, it, it's interesting where ideas can come from. Yeah, so it's like a multitude of venues like. I wrote down, like, ideas can come from real life, but the big thing I wrote down was, it can come from other filmmakers and what oh, yeah, they yeah. do. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother told me about this episode from South Park where Butters, I believe, is trying to do something, but someone keeps informing him that The Simpsons did it already. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the moral of that episode being, it doesn't matter if somebody's already done this. We can still do We can still do this and make it our own. Yeah, like, uh, like uh, I think James Rolfe and Nostalgia Critic said that. So like, because like when they review other film, each other's films, or films that they've reviewed, or mm -hmm. any of the, anyone else's reviewed, as long as you make it different enough, if you have something else to say, but um, or it's a big feud that's over several videos. <laughs> yeah. So um, Ryan, do you have any comments on where ideas come from? Not related to the topic, but I, kind of going off what you said of the, oh well, we've already done this and. Uh, if we make it different enough or if we do our own, like that's fine. The funny thing that made it made me think of and it kinda goes back to The Last Jedi and I don't mean to bring it back up, but uh, I remember like when The Last Jedi first came out I kinda related it to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two and I said they mm -hmm. were kind like if you look at the structure and like some of the big plot points, they're kind of the same movie. Right. Hmm. Or you know. You just blew my mind there for a second. You're like, you're, you're right. Yeah. Holy crap. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of when Tom made me uh, think when brought up the comparisons everybody was making with Fallen Kingdom to Home Alone with dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, ju yeah. I just stood there. I did. I stood there like, you're well, right. Like, like Doug, Doug Walker made those. Oh, Doug okay. and Rob made those comparisons. And I just kind of like brought those up to you. But still, I just stood there. I was like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's definitely uh, that's definitely a discussion for another time. But that is not right now. Yeah. So uh, just you know where ideas come from. It's like you know, because um, some people I've been asked a couple of times. You know, ever since I've been to filmmaking, it's like when I show people scripts, so I say, "Where do you come up with this stuff?" And I'm just like, "Well, you know, it's kind of an inspiration." But it's like, watch uh, for those aspiring filmmakers watching. Watch watch a lot of movies. You know, good and bad, with limitations. Yes. Um. But you know, like figure out where your figure out what your style is. You know, figure out uh, what what kind of stuff you want to do. Um, you what know, characters put, you would like to see. Put your own put your own spin on things and make the movies you want to see. Yeah. So, like if you wanted to see, uh, let's say, Ferris Bueller meets Clerks, make it happen. <clears throat> or yeah, <laughs> or like just John Hughes movies, but set in poor middle class America, like what Clerks is. <laughs> um, Oh, God. Speaking of Ferris Bueller, did they ever... 
Was there ever th- a- a- anything ever came about that supposed sequel they were going to do with an older Matthew Broderick? Uh, oh, yeah, I, actually, I did hear about I I, I I was watching like a John Hughes or Ferris Bueller documentary. Um, but no, I never, never, never heard anything else about it beyond that. I, I just came to my mind and I found a place to fit it in. Uh, but, but yeah, just watch a lot of movies. Watch your favorite movies. Look, yeah. at, yeah. look into why you love them so much. Figure and, out what bad movies is why the bad movies don't work and see what you could do think about what you could do to fix them take a bad movie that you despise or a premise that you think doesn't work and figure out how you would make it work or how you would do it if you were given the tools to do it mm-hmm. yeah. there was a video i watched last night and it's talking about ant-man and the wasp and i think it was a good practice um every now and then to if you don't like a movie or um, if a movie is genuinely received as bad Maybe write it out um, as to like how you can fix the movie, um, or how or what you would have done differently to make it a better movie. Mm-hmm. So the the video on Ant Man and the Lost that I saw, um, it was going over like okay, so this this is where I felt it went wrong. This is what didn't work for me. This is what I would have done to change it. And it wasn't oh well, I would have done this or I would have done that. And it wasn't like out of the realm of possibility. It was just minor things like we'll we'll change this one line or we'll change this scene to have this character instead of this character and it's instead of taking the movie in a completely different direction it just makes those little tiny things that kind of bugged you or maybe things like that just make them work and click a little bit better hmm. yeah kind of like um this two steve job films the one with uh ashton kutcher and the other one with fassbender yes. michael fassbender with cf rogan oh, yeah yeah um and it's like um I remember Jeremy John said something like if about the Kutcher movie if this was directed by I can't remember his name but the guy who directed the Fastbender movie if that guy directed the Kutcher movie it would have been better so and then that guy made a Steve Jobs movie and it was apparently ten times better I mean I haven't seen it yet but I've seen not I've, I haven't seen either I, I I've know, seen the one with Ashton Kutcher I own the the Fastbender film but I haven't seen it yet. yeah what did what did you think of the yeah, well, Kutcher movie at the time I thought it was really good um I thought it might might have like glossed over like the character of Steve Jobs a little bit too much mm-hmm. but that was the big thing I was hearing that. It was kind of like a glorified version of the story. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed Ashton Kutcher, though. Yeah, I, I think he's a bit of a, I mean, he is kind of typecast in like comedy roles, like you know that seventy show and Dude, Where's My Car? But um, you know, it's a, you know, I think he can be. It's it's kind of like Jim Carrey. He can be. They can be really good dramatic actors. Yes. So with just with mixed results, you know. So, uh, but sorry, I got cut you off, Ryan. No, you're fine. Um, that's all I was. I had to say. Okay. On it anyways. Um. So. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where ideas can come from. Yeah. And they can come out of nowhere. Just one day you're thinking about something, and then yeah, that could be a movie. And uh, get, get your, you know, get get a little active. You know, like uh, I run. You know, uh, you know, you know, go go for a. Oh, a walk or something, you know, like uh, Don Witcher used to say to us, like, uh, take walk. a walk. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Walk and talk. You do your best thinking when you walk. Yeah. Because um, you're less stressed. I mean, mine, I don't entirely work that way because just this is how my brain is because I have ADHD and everything. So, yeah. um, but, you know, that that's, you know, do, you know, figure out, you know, what, where you're, how to get your, you know, your blood flowing in your brain. So, and to get your ideas flowing. So, um, and yeah, that's just, you know, be be creative. You know, yeah. I feel like uh, there's you know too many uncreative people out there these days. I remember my junior year of high school, I took a creative writing class, and uh, one of the first things I heard when I walked in is just like one student said, "She, I'm not creative. I'm just like, well, what are you doing here? Well, I, I know why, but still. Anywho, so um, is there anything else? Anything else about ideas? Nothing else on ideas, um, at least from me. Yeah. Um, is there anything else from you guys? Uh, I think we've hit. The... Yeah, we we might we, uh, touch a little bit more on a future episode. Okay. Yeah. So, but um, which uh, we actually should also when we finish we should talk about you know the list of filmmaking like, topics like uh, that from other filmmakers' idea we could have a discussion about remakes and reboots from that. Oh yeah. Because that could easily that could easily tie into something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, but um, I think that's that's about it. So uh, let's move on to our uh, fourth and final topic: the content preview. Yeah. So um, this this channel we're gonna uh, this is a new uh, for those uh, watching this on YouTube. Um, well, we actually hope we're not you're not watching this. Like actually, you know, we'll do what let's do what do what podcasts do. Um, so, uh, for this YouTube channel, um, and for those listening on SoundCloud, we'll have links to everything in the description. Uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, this, the YouTube channel is going to have, uh, we're going to, we're launching a whole new channel, of course, watching, and, um, we're going to have, we're going to be producing content. Uh, we're not going to say, uh, how much content a week, or we're not going to, uh, announce a schedule yet because we're still trying to work the kings out and how well we can stick to it so um but uh starting uh within uh i think a couple weeks within a couple weeks yeah yes. in a couple yep. weeks we're gonna be uh uh launching new content uh, uh dylan and i have some stuff in the works uh i know ryan's got some it's stuff planned good, out yeah. and uh the three of us are gonna have obviously this podcast and another show that we're gonna be uh working on after we film this um so that'll be that'll be fun. So um, and uh, again, we're not going to uh, go into too much detail yet, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see where this this channel goes and how far we're we're gonna go. Yeah, I think the eventual goal um, is eventually once we get start kind of start rolling mm -hmm. and. Um, like getting getting some more traction is eventually uh, Monday through Friday videos mm -hmm. um, with maybe occasional content on weekends. Um, it just depends. Yeah. Um, but I think right now we're aiming for Monday through Friday. So podcast yeah. on Monday and then um, eventual announcements for yeah. what will come Tuesday through Friday. Yeah, yeah. Um, we already have something planned out for Friday, but we won't go into too much of that. But um, yeah, this is going to be good. And uh, so right now the schedule is just the podcast on Mondays and uh, – Soon, uh, once we get a better setup, we're gonna be stream. We'll be streaming on Twitch, um, and uh, hopefully soon we can get this on uh, iTunes. Um, I'm trying to work that out. That's a it's a bit of a complicated process. So I'll bet. Um, yeah. So, but um. Anyway, yeah. Anything else to say about the new content? No, nope, just that I'm. I'm be excited ready. For it. Yeah, I'm I think excited that for it. We're um, gonna be producing like our own kind of unique content and yeah, we all yeah. bring something different to the table yeah, yeah. Um, that I think um, if, if you like us for, for one thing or you discover us eventually down the road um, off of one video, um, you're going to like everything else yeah. that that we all produce here. On yeah, the there'll be like uh, some tutorials. Like uh, I think I'll implement the tutorials I did on my YouTube channel here uh, occasionally because I don't feel like I'm the best at tutorials or I just have to crank them out really fast and I don't feel like they're the best, but... Um, but even that still. So, but, and I, all three of us have a different kind of thing. Obviously, all three of us are filmmakers, so that's one thing we'll bring to the table uh, with the round table. Um, and uh, Dylan, I think you're a bit more involved with the geek culture because you go to more conventions <laughs> than than both of us. But not by a far stretch. I've. <laughs> but yeah, I. I... You're a, you are a brony. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and you're you're. Oh, sad news to report. Um, next year will be the last brony con. Oh, that sucks. Yep. So, There's still other conventions. They're all over the world, yeah, dude. You gonna go to that? I want to. Yeah. I want to. Yeah, but okay. Um, but yeah, you're you're a bit more involved with the geek culture and more of like the animation and anime culture. So so you you that's something you can bring to the table. Um, um, I'm familiar with anime. I'm actually. Uh, I need to see more like this, most of the Studio Ghibli films. Um, and then uh, Ryan, you're a bit more involved with the gaming community, like yep. the stuff you do with Pokemon Go and some other stuff you do yep. behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, I'm mostly film, um, you know, and uh, we might talk about some TV stuff here on YouTube because um, you know, most of us are, like, varying when it comes to TV. Uh, I think we're going to see more, more of us than us because TV mm -hmm. is harder for me to get into. Yep. The only show I've been really into is Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. And actually, when The Clone Wars comes back, I'll be into that. So I've delved a little bit into Stranger Things. Uh, I need to keep going on it. It's because, really good. Because like I said, to keep myself busy, you know, I'm starting to set aside time for movies, um, both in the theater and just to see what, uh, and uh, also films that I own that I haven't watched yet. I haven't kept up with television ever since we got rid of satellite. <laughs> Anything that yeah. I'm interested television-wise, I find other ways of viewing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's how I view things. a bottle of rum. rum. 
but um yeah that's the so that's the type of content that's going to be on this channel which uh, we're all very excited about all of us are going to bring you know various different things to the table um and also the 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 title of this channel the as of right now it's the round table we're still trying to you know figure that out um so it, were you gonna say something no okay um because I know we were we we needed we're gonna discuss after we finish yes. the, the 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 title and everything and the round and actually getting a round table mm -hmm. and uh, after we uh, shoot another thing. So um, is that it? Yeah, I that's think it. I think that's about it. So ladies um, and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the filmmakers round table. If you would like to follow our personal channels, our twitters, or whatever to keep updated on what we do, those will all be in the description below. Continuously, if you have any movies, retro, modern, or something that you want us to talk about in the in film industry or what have you, let us know in the comments below. Any secret links or special links or stuff that we mentioned throughout this episode will be in the description as well. Hope to have you guys here next time. Bye-bye. See ya. All right. Cool. Cool, that was good. Hey, Roundtable. Dylan here. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us this week on the Filmmakers Roundtable. This podcast will be coming out every Monday on SoundCloud and here on YouTube. Also, be on the lookout later this week on Friday. We've got a new segment coming your way called The Friday Show. How clever. Also, for that content that Tom was talking about in the last episode, well, we're still scheduling that out, but I can safely say that you'll see it in two weeks. So be on the lookout for that. We'll see you Friday, everybody. Goodbye. Totally didn't take that from the webcomic relief. <laughs>